All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, my name is Mary Beth. I am the patient care coordinator here at Vibrant Family Chiropractic. If you're not already a patient with us and would love for us to help you optimize your health through nervous system health with chiropractic adjustments and all the other features here in our health center, please reach out to me. Um, our phone number is 803 548 6900, or you can email me directly at marybeth at maxlivingfortmill.com. And you can do that if you're interested in becoming a patient or if you have any questions after watching this. So let's dive right in. Um, happy spring. Warm weather is back, and we're going to find ourselves spending more time outside. So we wanted to provide you with some education on how to interact with the sun in the healthiest way possible. So a lot of people know, oh, it's like good to get outside and, you know, makes me feel really good, but they don't really know how to protect themselves from sun damage, except for sunscreen. And there are just a couple of problems with sunscreen, one being that it is blocking your vitamin D production. So if possible, you don't want to use it all the time. And number two being that most of the ones out there are very toxic and full of chemicals can even like lead to issues like cancer. So we're going to talk about uh, what are some healthier options and what are some other ways other than just putting on, you know, sunscreen to also protect yourself from sun damage. So without further ado, this is tips for healthy sun exposure. So let's start out with some of the benefits of sun exposure. So uh, increased immunity, you know, being out in the sun is proven to increase our resilience and uh, just boost our immune system to different pathogens and, and sicknesses. Um, Florence Nightingale, this is actually really interesting, was at one point designing hospitals that had more windows because they found that even just seeing the sun um, really radically uh, increased the rate at which patients would get over, you know, whatever, whatever illness they had. Improved energy and mood. So a lot of us can feel this, right? It's been a long winter. We've had some of our first warmer days where we were able to get out in the sun. And most of us feel that, that instant increase in energy and mood. And it's because, you know, the sun is helping with the production of hormones like cortisol, which we actually need in the morning to get our energy up. Um, it also helps with the production of neurotransmitters like dopamine, which really lift our mood and lift our spirits. Um, so there's a lot of research to actually back up why that's the case. It's not random. It's, um, it's very, it's very uh, measurable. Better sleep due to setting the circadian rhythm. So it might seem counterintuitive that spending time in the sun during the day would help you sleep better at night. But the reason is because it's, it's setting that biological clock. So especially if you get out in the early hours of the day and get some unfiltered morning light, uh, it actually helps your body recognize this is morning knowing then what the cascade of hormones will be through the day so that it knows how many hours from them, then it's going to start producing melatonin to help you sleep really good at night. Um, hormone balance in general. So a lot of people don't know vitamin D is a bit of a misnomer. It's actually more of a hormone in the body than a vitamin. Um, but that's been in the nomenclature so long that most people have just stuck with it. So we'll continue to call it a vitamin, even though it's more like a hormone. And it actually does help with the production of like our sex hormones and, and, you know, can lead to better hormone balance and reproductive health, stronger bones and teeth. Um, so we need vitamin D Vitamin D and calcium play like a very synergistic role in, uh, you know, how we have very strong bones and teeth. So that's something that we want to also pay attention to lowers blood pressure and blood sugar levels. So it does actually help with regulating both blood pressure and blood sugar. Um, and then a quick note, I just wanted to make sure we were all understanding that Yes, vitamin D supplements are amazing. 
and there's time and a place for them. Um, however, they are not necessarily giving us all of these benefits, like especially when we're talking about the benefits that directly come from light, such as those circadian rhythm, biological clock benefits. So while, you know, we're certainly never going to discourage you taking vitamin D as a supplement, um, we do want to look at actual sun exposure as a supplement to our health as well. So this is really cool. Before heliophobia, that would be fear of the sun, was heliotherapy. And that would be, you know, improving one's health through the sun. So back in 1903, Niels Fensen won the Nobel Prize for his research using phototherapy to treat diseases like lupus. And phototherapy is something that's actually now starting to trend. Um, again, uh, you will see people probably mentioning things like their red light therapy that they're using at home and all the benefits of it. So that's another uh, form of phototherapy. And the original form of phototherapy being light therapy what was the sun. You know, that was how we, we got that therapy from light. So inspired by Finson's research, Auguste Rollier opened a heliotherapy clinic in Switzerland where he would successfully treat many patients with skeletal, skeletal TB, um, rickets, and some other health issues as well using, I mean, what a lovely prescription, sunbathing combined with fresh air, high altitude, a nutrient dense diet, physical exercise and rest, like sign me up for that. Um, and, and it worked. I mean, these kids would come in and they were very sick and they would, you know, if you can see in the picture here, um, we have some children that are just laying out on this veranda in the Swiss Alps and they would be out there for hours a day, just sunbathing, eating extremely nutrient dense foods. I think um, they were known to eat like homemade sourdough with grass fed butter on it. And they would be there for a handful of months and, you know, leave with a, you know, deep tan and be significantly healthier than they were when they first came. So let's talk about, you know, the fear of the sun and how that even makes sense because sun damage is clearly a thing, right? Like skin cancer is a thing, but it's really hard to wrap your head around when you also think about the fact that the sun is literally the, like the giver of life. Every living entity on our planet requires it to exist. So that's why, you know, when we're talking about sun damage and, and things like skin cancer, it's a highly nuanced topic, right? Like how could the thing that allows us to live also be creating disease and illness? And so the vitalistic approach is a really good lens to kind of view this from. So vitalism proposes the notion that living in accordance with nature is the way to optimal health. So nature itself, the sun itself, would not cause disease unless we are currently living in ways that do not align with the basic principles of nature. And that's a lot to unpack. We're gonna kind of like get into this, you know, bit by bit. So sun damage happens, not solely because of the sun itself, but because of what we bring to the interaction, right? Like in chemistry, you have like the two elements combined that then create whatever happens after that. So a body built on a diet and lifestyle lacking the protective factors we are about to discuss. Um, so we're gonna get into what are the diet and lifestyle pieces that are missing from the way that we're currently living that leads to sun damage and, and things of that nature. And what about sunscreen? You know, there's a time and a place for sunscreen. 
However, the most popular sunscreen brands are full of chemicals linked to health concerns as serious as endocrine disruption, allergies, immunotoxicity, and even cancer. So it's kind of like, wait a second, like, let's take a step back. We're using sunscreen to protect us from skin cancer and you're using ingredients in it that lead to cancer. Like, please explain this to me. I would love to understand your, your logic here. So chemical sunscreens are also dangerous because they do not, they, they, sorry, they do stop sunburn, but not necessarily skin cancer. So the sunburn is our body's alarm system saying, hey, I've had enough. I can't handle anymore, right? So I'm not saying this is the case with every kind of sunscreen out there, but just because a sunscreen is stopping sunburn doesn't mean that it's necessarily stopping skin cancer because if anything, it's possibly allowing you to continue being in the sun longer than your body actually wants you to. So stopping sunburn is just stopping your body's alarm system. That makes, and that is what makes you aware that you've been out in the sun too long. So just think about, okay, like sunburn has a purpose, you know, and it's, it's a healing mechanism. The blood is rising to the surface of the skin to protect it and to heal it. Um, so like we need to be a little more wise about, okay, what can we do to become more resilient so that even sunburn isn't happening? Like we do not want to get sunburned. That is something that we do want to avoid. And we want to avoid that by the most logical means and not just slathering on chemicals to artificially halt that process. If you think you'll be spending more time outside than you can currently handle without getting sunburned, there are significantly safer brands to choose when selecting an SPF. Um, a few favorite brands of mine include Badger, All Good, Living Libations, and many more can be found on the ewg.org consumer guide. If you've ever heard of the Dirty Dozen when you're grocery shopping, that was made by the Environmental Working Group. They also have a phenomenal resource on their website for choosing healthy body care products, even beyond sunscreen and household cleaners and things like that. It is also wise to wear light, loose clothing when you can, a hat, and get into the shade as much as possible. Now, there are also chemical-free ways to protect yourself from sun, sun damage even beyond um, you know, sunscreen. So eating lots of antioxidants can protect you from the, re the free radicals produced by sun damage. So if you're, you know, eating the rainbow, so to speak, eating lots of healthy fruits and vegetables, those antioxidants are going to be helping protect you from sun damage. So you're going to hang out by the pool or at the beach, like pack your cooler with some berries and some, you know, watermelon and some fresh, some fresh fruit to take along with you. Now, this is really important getting consistent small amounts of sun exposure all year long. So if you are getting consistent exposure, we are seeing that those people actually have less sun damage and less skin cancer. Um, we'll get into this a little bit deeper in a minute, but basically the most skin cancer is often seen in people that are always indoors, always, you know, at work under fluorescent lights. And then these people go on vacation, their body's like, what the heck is the sun? I don't even remember what this is or how to protect myself from it. And then they're suddenly at the beach for a week outside, you know, eight hours a day. And it's like going from one extreme to the other where like the, the regular consistent, you know, starting right now, this is why we wanted to have this class right now at the beginning of spring, like go ahead and go outside without sunscreen on and spend five minutes if that's all you can handle. You know, slowly work your way up to 10 minutes and 15 and so on and so forth so that when summer comes along, your body is already more resilient. Um, 
cutting out canola and other seed oils to your best ability. So this is kind of, kind of hard to wrap your head around, but not only are these oils just trash for your body, um, like really highly processed vegetable oils, take them out of your pantry and put them in the trash can. They are bad for so many different things way beyond this topic, you know, um, blood sugar regulation, um, brain health, so on and so forth, but they're also not stable. So our, the, the oil in our skin is created by the oils that we consume. So if the oils that we are consuming are already damaged from heat, like as they're being heated and we're cooking with them, uh, they are already oxidated. They're on our skin and then they're not able to protect us from the sunlight. So a lot of times if you see um, diets of, of humans that did not have these processed vegetable oils, they not only didn't have sun damage. They, they also typically do not have the amount of wrinkles and, and, um, other like skin, like issues that come with using a lot of canola oil, um, using an app like D minder D minder is incredible. So D minder takes into consideration, like what, um, your current, you know, like based on like your skin tone, how much vitamin D you can handle. You plug in your location. It knows the amount of UV at any given time. And you literally track when you're starting your sun exposure. Like say you're gonna be like tanning or like outside. You start it, it tracks how much vitamin D you're actually getting from that session in the sun, which I think is so cool. And it even warns you when to stop. It'll like say, Hey, get out in the sun, get out of the sun. You've been in it for an hour or two. And based on your complexion and the current UV, it's like, you need to stop, like seek shade or go inside. Um, so love D minder. It's an app. It's literally the letter D dash M I N D E R. And then lastly, you know, do use a mineral sunscreen when, when you need to. So if you know you're going to be outside, you know, as long as it takes or longer than it takes for you to get a sunburn, typically go get a zinc sunscreen. Another thing to consider, and you know, this is kind of common sense, but it's worth mentioning how close your collective ancestors live to the equator does affect how much sun you can handle and how much sun you need to produce adequate vitamin D levels in the body. So if you have darker skin, you are going to be able to be outside much longer. That's, that's pretty common knowledge. However, it also means that you probably require being outside much longer to have good vitamin D levels. Um, you know, if you are Scandinavian and, you know, at some point in the last few hundred years, your ancestors moved much closer to the equator, you know, it just think about the fact that like, even with all of these tips and, you know, eating your fruits and veggies and using the zinc sunscreen, uh, you still are going to have to be mindful of like, okay, right. We are in some way, shape or form out of accordance with nature and the way that like my DNA was, you know, evolved for this level of sun exposure and we are now much closer to the equator. So that's just a piece that I thought was worth mentioning and also why I love the D-Minder app um, because it does actually take that into consideration. Um, this is an interesting piece. So Sunglasses are found to block the signal to the optic nerve that tells the pituitary gland to make melanin that protects us from sun damage. That doesn't mean that you should never wear sunglasses. Like, let me just go ahead and say that. Like, they are pretty important for your health when it comes to, like, you're driving down the road and the sun's in your eyes and, and things like that. And if you're not used to spending a lot of time outside and suddenly you're on vacation, you're in a much brighter place, you know, of course we want to protect our eyes. Um, but what's better is if you can gradually 
spend time outside at any time it is not you know, painful for you to not be wearing sunglasses, you know, spend your time outside, get those like early morning hours of light, unfiltered without any glasses on. And that's going to be producing again, um, or, or speaking to the pituitary gland to make that melanin that is protecting you from the sun. A um, little interesting piece of research. Um, so there is a link that has been found between melanoma and exposure to fluorescent lighting at work. And, you know, this, I am not putting this out there to make you like afraid of artificial lighting. In fact, like the reason I thought this was worth mentioning is because again, it isn't the people most of the time that are consistently making an effort to get outside that end up with melanoma or skin cancer. It's often the people that spend no time outside and then suddenly go out and they're unprotected. They're using like a really toxic sunscreen. And they went from like not spending any time outside during the spring to being on vacation in the summer. And they're suddenly out for like eight hours. So I, th I thought this was really interesting. Reported exposure to fluorescent light at work was associated with a doubling of melanoma risk. So, you know, don't freak out about anything that's out of your control. I work under fluorescent lights. You know, when I go to the grocery store, I'm under fluorescent lights, but I am always seeking opportunities to spend time outside when I can. Okay, this is one last interesting piece to look at. So what is hormesis? Living organisms have always had to cope with harsh environmental conditions. And in order to survive, they have developed complex mechanisms to deal with them. These responses have been assembled in a concept called hormesis, which has been identified as an evolutionary process in which a low dose of a stressful stimulus activates an adaptive response that increases the resistance of the cell or organism to higher stress level. Um, so what this means in layman terms is that hormesis is kind of getting a small dose of a stressor, you know, as often as you can, keeping it at a small dose so that your body adapts and learns to be resilient to it. So not only does this speak to, you know, sun exposure, but also, uh, you know, like exercise is a form of stress, you know, like getting small doses of stress through physical activity, make you stronger, make you more resilient. Um, and I think that, you know, sun is another really great example of this too. So just think about it in terms of, there's a lot of accountability factor when there's anything that could be both um, healing or damaging. Right. So it's like getting those small doses is putting, giving the power back to you and saying like, okay, I know that yes, there are, you know, there's a lot of possibilities of sun damage if I'm being really irresponsible with how I'm spending time outside. However, I'm aware that there are so many amazing health benefits that I do not want to pass up on. And so all that means is that I have to be responsible and choose, you know, the hormesis approach, which is understanding that small doses, building up my resilience over the year is the healthiest way to go about making my body good at fighting, you know, any uh, free radical damage that comes from a lot of sun exposure. So in conclusion, here are our takeaways. We want to avoid chemicals when picking sunscreen. So as a reminder, again, ewg.org. They also have an app. Um, think zinc. Just think zinc. When you're thinking sunscreen, look for zinc. Don't look for any, any other type of sunscreen. Try to get a little sun exposure every single day. Consistency matters. Eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables for the antioxidants to protect from sun damage. Avoid canola and other seed oils. 
you know, instead cook with butter, ghee, and coconut oil. Um, olive oil we know is really healthy, uh, but we typically want to use it as a finishing oil. So using it without heating it or just very low heat. Um, use a D-Minder app and wear a hat, wear loose clothing, seek shade, and, and such. So that is it for our class. Thank you again so much for joining me. Again, my name is Mary Beth. I'm the patient care coordinator here at Vibrant Family Chiropractic. Um, you know, if you have a question about booking an appointment with us, again, our number is 803-548-6900. And if you have questions about becoming a patient or you have questions about this class, um, shoot me an email. Again, my email is Mary Beth at maxlivingfortmill.com. Thanks guys, have a great day.